Yeah, I don't know how most of you feel, but I'm like, it's Sunday, it's 9.45, I should still be asleep. Um, so when it comes to getting a site, if you're a new user, you're like, yay, I've got a new website, it's all nice and shiny pretty. What am I supposed to do with it now? I have it, it's online. I don't know. Let's see. Oh. There we go. I'm actually not from Miami, not from even Florida. I'm from Southern Illinois. Flew down on Wednesday to enjoy the weather since it, we had snow when I left home. I do support for a little awesome plugin called Give. I also do support for the Yoast products. I am one of the lead organizers for um, the Southern Illinois WordPress group. And I also teach beginners in intermediate WordPress. Websites are not build them and forget them. I see so many times of, yeah, I've got a website. I've not really done anything since 1832, or at least how it looks. So many times people are often like, yeah, we have it built. We had someone did an awesome job. But we don't do anything with it anymore. And I also do a lot of website security. And I'm like, OK, let me just take a look, peek around your server, see what's going on. And there's like 320 files that say like dot XYZ456. And you open it up. And when you see the code, it's typically in the base 64 encode. And your first thought is, yee. I've seen some sites where people were like, yeah, I haven't logged in or anything in a couple of years, and it's really moving slow. Go and look at the server. It's a torrent site. <coughs> there was over 100 gigs of torrent movie files hidden in the server. And that's why they're not build them and forget them, because you want your money to be paying for your stuff and to keep people coming to your business online. And there's really simple steps that you can do that your designer and developer sometimes don't tell you because they're like, yeah, I built it. I took your money. Here you go. Have fun. Bye. And if you're writing your own content, if you are doing the, I'm having somebody else build it, but I want to take care of my online presence. You really need to make sure you understand the dashboard. Make sure you understand the difference between a post and a page. Make sure you know what it means to publish before you're given the range to just go. Um, there's so many tutorials out there. And for your um, designer, developer, freelancer who built it for you, can also give you the steps to help you understand what it is you're doing before you go out to do it on your own. <coughs> There's simple little steps everybody should be doing. And the first thing is to remember, if you didn't click save, didn't happen. I've seen so many, and it's just like when we all were, all were writing our term papers for college. Or we have like the seven pages to our paper, and we're on page six, and we got like 5,000 words, and it's three o'clock in the morning, and oh dear God, I'm done. Let me close my laptop. Oh, bonkers, I forgot to save. And you open it back up, praying that everything's still there, and you have a white screen. It's the same in WordPress. You have to click save or publish, or it didn't happen. And it's good to do that often. Like, I know when I'm writing a really long post, all every couple of paragraphs, I'll go up and click save. Or if I'm going to run to the bathroom or grab a drink or something like that, I always go ahead and just click save because it doesn't hurt anything to click save 500 times. And it's make sure you get to keep your information because there was one time in the very beginning I was, I had probably about 14 hundred words on the blog post I was making. It's really on a roll. And power flickered. And it shut down um, my router and rebooted. And with that, you always have to re-log into WordPress when you're um, 
router changes, and I lost everything. And it only takes months of you doing that to remember to always do that. And equally important is backups. There's so many times people, and I know even the big time developers time and from time to time do a little what's called cowboy coding, which means you're going right onto your live website, live server, and changing stuff. Almost 90% of the time when you do that live cowboy coding, if you don't make a backup first, something will go wrong. Murphy's Law has lots of fun when it comes to that. And it's always good when you make a backup, you always have something to fall back on. So nothing is ever permanent when you have a backup. Because you could go in and you could make a backup and change the theme, change your um, header. Oh, I don't like that blue, let's change it to green and do all kinds of stuff. And then two hours later, you're looking at this and you're like, where did I do on the steps of this? Because I don't like what I did 20 minutes ago. And you have no idea in a way how far to go back on what you did. So you could just go back to your backup and start back with a clean slate again. And then back up and back up often because of the fact you, know, you could get hacked. Something could go wrong with your server. Something when you're changing something could go wrong. And if you have the backup, nothing's ever permanent. Also, Save it to some place other than your server. Save it to your computer, send it to Dropbox, send it to Amazon, to your email, to anything other than your server. Because if something happens to your server, say, so, you know, I've got all my information on my computer, it's all safe there. What happens if there's a fire? What happens if your computer gets stolen? What happens if your hosting company crashes? If you only have those files in one spot, you're putting all your eggs in a basket. And then if you have them scheduled, like I have mine to run about two o'clock in the morning every night, you don't have to mess with it. You just know they're done. And if something does go wrong, you have it set up to you get an email. So you wake up in the morning and go, oh, that backup didn't go completely as planned. Let me go in and rerun one. The backup plugins, the three most popular, Backup Buddy, Updraft Plus, and BackWP Up. <coughs> there are others out there. These are just the ones that I have personally used myself. And then updates. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry? Duplicator. Duplicator. Yes, duplicator is another one. <coughs> Updates. This is one of the most important things that you're never told when you first get your website. Updates are like the most important thing to ever do with your site other than putting new content on it. Update core, update your plugins, update your themes, update everything. Almost all updates are because of a security vulnerability found or they've added new features. Either way, it's needed to be updated. There are times where the developer will go back and look at his code and be like, oh, I could write that better and then change it around and then send it to an update. But most of the time, it is security or feature related. Most malware infections are due to lack of updating. I've seen many sites that um, will be hacked because they're still on WordPress 2.8. And I have seen that in the past year. Now, with speaking of updates, one of the most popular places to get themes, especially in some plugins, is Envato. Oh, sorry, skipped a screen on that one. 
for the updates, when you log on, you'll see dashboard and you'll see a little red circle with a number in it. That red circle means how many updates you have. And if you highlight on the dashboard, it'll show updates and you click on that. And that's how you can go in to update your um, plugins and core and themes. Except for if you use Envato, which is Code Canyon, Theme Forest, um, um, like Aveda theme, um, Rev Slider is um, two of the more common ones. How they run their updates is they have a little box you could check um, at your download screen that will send you an email when there are updates. There are some, like Aveda has, if you go into their um, Aveda settings on your dashboard where you add in your license number and it will send updates that way. But they do not send them to the dashboard like Core does. And if you don't get the emails or you don't have it set up, you won't know when it needs to be updated. And that was one of the biggest reasons why they had such um, an issue with the Rev Slider um, malware, which happened a year ago, October, and there are still sites that are being cleaned even this week because they don't know those plugins are built into the themes didn't know that there was updates and just let it go. And this is one of the main things you need to stay on top of. And security is also a big important thing when it comes to maintenance. Um, it's more important to secure before something happens. Because oftentimes they're like, oh, my site only gets 40 visitors a day. It won't get hacked. Oh, I just have a knitting site. No one pays attention to it. It won't get hacked. One of my test sites, not indexed by Google, no people seeing it, nothing, had a DDoS attack on it. It can happen to any site, no matter big or small. And it's easier to take care of beforehand just by doing some me um, simple measures like updating and a few other things than it is to pay three, four, five hundred dollars to get the site cleaned afterwards. One of the biggest things to do security rise is for your login, don't let it be admin. Don't let your password be password. And don't think, oh, I'm going to be cool and I'm going to do capital A-D-I-M number one and password is PA55, I'm gonna change it up. This is just as easy as red as password. To the bots, this is password. They will figure it out in like 0.2 seconds. Now if you have something like couple X34 at side ZYX37 and it totally looks like someone just grabbed your keys and went like this and came up with something, those are less to be hacked because the harder it is for you to remember, the harder it is for a bot to break. <coughs> and for people who will be like, oh, um, I only need one password because I can't remember it all. Um, say you have this one, you use your email and you use one password for everything. We'll say your password's I love cookies. You got your website and it's, you know, Michelle at gmail.com and I love cookies is my password. And one of the bots figure out, you know, your login is Michelle at gmail.com and your your password's I love cookies. Let's see if I can get into their email address. Gmail.com. Michelle at gmail.com. I love cookies. Oh, I got in. Well, I, you know, always carry around this thing and that's pretty much where I live my life. And I even have mobile banking because I like to check what my account is on my phone. But remember, I only like to use one password. And I see, you know, I use, we'll say, um, Regents Bank. And they see on my emails that I use Regents Bank. So we go to regentsbank.com and let's try to log in. Michelle at gmail.com. I love cookies. No, that didn't work. Let's do capital I love cookies. I'm into your email account. I'm into your bank account. Going through your bank account, I know 
you've got um, stocks and you use Ameritrade. Let's go over to Ameritrade and see if I can get in that way. I love cookies. No, I, capital I, capital L, capital C. Let's do cookies as zero, zero. Just got into your stock information. Within five minutes, was able to go from finding out your username and password on WordPress to knowing all the financial inst information. That's why you use separate passwords for everything. And then only give users the access they need. Say you have four or five ghost writers who do work for you. But you want to make sure you read their posts before they go out. You don't trust anyone to do the live posting. They don't need an admin account. They don't need to be able to access your theme settings. They don't even need to be able to post theirs live. They only need authors. But they think they're going to tell you they need admin access. Don't give it to them. You're the website owner. You tell them how much they can get in. And for this also, if say you're just having a person write one post for you, or you want them just to add two pictures to a slider and then they're never getting into the site again. Once you're, they're done, delete out their user, um, username and password. Delete out their account. They don't need in, so they don't need to have access to it anymore. <coughs> it's a simple thing you can do just to keep the access down. And then file detection. This is one of the really cool things that could be done so you can notice if anything has changed. There's a lot of plugins out there that does it. I think security, WordFence has it. Um, the security scanner plugin also has it. Is there an option for, um, when we were trying to figure this out at work, if you have a guest writer or a freelancer that writes a column, right now we have to set up, and we're not on WordPress.org yet, we're in the process of migrating. But if you set it up, right now if I write an article but I want to give someone else a byline, I'm able to that mm -hmm. um, on WordPress app, as long as they've been established as an editor or contributor or some aspect. Is there a way to give someone a byline without them being a contributor or an editor or one of those levels of access? It's a little more tricky. Okay. Um, talk to me after. Okay. There's a plugin for that. Hmm? There's a plugin for that. Mm -hmm. Plugins that I recommend for security, <coughs> iTheme Security, they have a free and a pro version, Security Firewall, WordFence, Jetpack has in combination Brute Protect and Vault Press. All of these are better than nothing. Do not put them all on at the same time and turn all the features on. If you want to use like iTheme Security and Security Firewall, Make sure there's, both plugins are not doing all the same thing. Like, you'll want to make sure that the login attempts is done by one plugin, scanning's done by the other plugin. Don't have them all doing the same thing at one time because they're just going to conflict with each other and it's not going to work. But there are ways you can do together with these, but just make sure they're divided out. I've seen some sites where they have 14 different security plugins on them and they have them all turned wide open and their site just doesn't work. It's pretty much like on your regular computer if you go to put Norton antivirus, AVG antivirus, and Kapersky on at the same time. It's just going to growl and yell at you. And then keep the plugins and themes you have on your site only the ones that are active. I've seen some sites where there's like 14 themes on there. You can only have one theme active at a time. It's good to always keep a one backup, which I use whatever the latest and greatest default theme right now is 2016. You don't need all of them on there because you're not going to use them. And all that does is when it comes on the server side is you'll see folders of the 14 plugins. That's 14 different, I mean 14 themes, that's 14 different ways it can get access. Especially if you're not updating these
themes you're not using. And plugins are the same way, especially if you're wanting to keep a list of the ones that are on the repo. They're, they have f uh, favorites now that you can mark. And it's so easy to say, like I do use the word fence scanner a lot, but I don't typically keep it on the site all the time. So I'll go in, I'll install it, I'll run the scanner a couple of times, make sure everything's okay, and then I delete it back out. Um, and then, since it's on my favorites, when I want to go at it again, I just go to plugins, go to my favorites, download it again. Because that's not keeping load on my server as well. The more plugins, the more images, the more stuff you have, the slower your site will run as well. And then my web scanning, do I need it? It depends on how you feel. If you want something monitoring your site every day, 24-7, Yes, if you want to be like with how I am and just run it every now and then, you can put it on and then take it back off. But that's how you feel. And then also, Security Scanner, Virus Total, they have off-site where you can run as well without having to use one of their plugins. And when you decide to make changes, there are some things to also consider. Do your due diligence when looking at themes and plugins. I've seen there's ones out there, I call them more of your cookie cutter themes, that they can do everything. But do you need a theme that does everything? Probably not. Because um, there's the ones where they have WooCommerce built in, and they have Gravity Forms built in, and they have a slider built in. Or and there's some that have three different sliders built in. Do you need three different slider plugins on your site? Probably not. Read through them and there's times it can, might take two or three days before you find really one you like. And that's fine. And also, there you can find ones that you like, put them on your site, test it around, realize it's not something you like, and then take it back off. That is fine as well. But do due diligence and testing before you commit to one. And then, not everything is pretty. <coughs> only keep what you're using again. The miscellaneous things your designer developer might not have told you. SEO. This is one of the most hottest topics spoken right now when it comes to online business and branding. Of course I recommend Yoast first and foremost. They send me a paycheck. <laughs> All in one SEO is also a good choice. It mainly Test them both, see which one you like the most. And don't let your site get too lonely, like I talked about before, where the girl had logged on in four years and she had, you know, over 100 gigs of movies on her server that she had no idea about. It's, uh, they also call it um, turning into a zombie site, and then zombie sites you know, work for other websites, and they don't work for you anymore. And if you do have questions, which even some of the more develop, um, bigger developers will have questions because, you know, they might work with just this and have no idea about this. Where do you go for answers? The codex.wordpress.org is your first and foremost place to find out the beginning information about getting into WordPress. And the .org repos, themes, and plugins, the best place to find out information, though, is go right to it, wordpress.org slash themes, wordpress.org slash Plugins. All of the plugins on there and all the themes have support built right in there. Twitter. I've seen so many times. I'm working on this WordPress site. I'm using easy digital downloads and I can't figure out X. And I tweet it out. And typically within five minutes, you'll see four or five answers getting sent. Facebook. Facebook has got many different um, WordPress groups. Advanced WordPress. We've got... We're over 18,000 now, aren't we? Members. All about WordPress. Genesis WordPress. There's um, ones for the Veda theme. One for beginners, intermediate, um, Divi, um, just developers, just theme designers. You could find a WordPress group to answer your questions. And there's many different admins for those groups here with you today. 
third party website, WP Beginner, is a wealth of information. Um, WP 101, Bob WP, all great sources of information um, to help you with your website. And there's more than just WordPress specific maintenance you should do. Always use complex passwords, again, not just with your website, but on your computer with your different logins on the internet. And then never use the same password on all the logins. Never email passwords. Uh, put in a text document. Use a um, password manager to send them. Don't just put them, you know, my login is da 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 da. Use a password for, um, for um, manager. LastPass is free to use, but they also have mobile integration, which is $12 well spent a year. 1Password, KeyPass. These make it to where I use both LastPass and 1Password. I don't remember any passwords anymore except for to log into those. And those has two separate passwords as well. They're kind of the same, but a bit different. <coughs> but this is to where when I go to a site, I also have them both on my cell phone as well. And uh, they both have where you can use your thumb instead of typing in a password. To where I'm like, you know, my password for my bank is like 30 characters, but I don't need to remember it because I could just hold my thumb, go to insert password, and it does it for me. If any login has two-factor authentication option, use it. Like where they send a pa uh, password to your cell phone or you have to use a Google Authenticator. Um, WordPress has, a, uh, has it built in with Jetpack and there's also the Clef plugin. And you can also, like on your cell phone where it has, where you can use your um, touchpad. Those are all different styles of two-factor authentication. Just makes it safer to, for your information. If you use an antivirus, my Mac right here has Kapersky on it. And a lot of people say, oh, Macs don't need it. I have no idea how many times Kapersky has made the lion roar of going to different websites or with me cleaning a site of saying that there's a Trojan trying to get on my computer. Be conscious when using public Wi-Fi. If there's not a password needed to get on it, that means anybody can get on it. Anybody can try to grab your information off of it. You could use a VPN. I use um, Cloak is just for Macs. TorGuard is good. Site Social. Hide my ass. Interesting name. Actually works pretty well. And Cloak is two nine. It's only for Mac. It's two ninety nine a month, and I absolutely love it. Can yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit more about that when we're using public Wi-Fi? How do people use that to get into our computer? How common is that? Um, one of the things that they can do is. When you're on an open network, it's just like being on your work's open network. All the computers are attached to this one router. And they, um, there's different things where you can just scrub information off of different computers attached to the same network. Um, there's different scripts that can be ran that can do even key loggers for your sites. They could go in and check the history of where you've been at while on that network, um, which is a lot of times done in open Wi-Fi. But if you're using a VPN, what a VPN does is I log into this um, IP address to um, network. What a VPN does, it adds an extra layer right here. So my computer has got to go to that, I'm over here, and then come back. Kind of like when you watch NCIS or Criminal Minds or something like that and you see the tech guy watching the pings. 
When you're using VPNs and stuff like that, it changes your pings of why it's harder to trace around for to get the information. There's, this, of course, with those hackers, they're using more complex VPNs and stuff like that, where these more just give one or two layers in between. And yes. You can buy a tool on Amazon for ninety nine dollars and sit in a cafe and look at all the stuff people are typing just by sniffing the traffic that's going through the the little pineapples. That's just like, for example, when it comes to the sharing of information, I have a good friend of mine who every time travels to different areas, almost every time his credit card information gets stolen by one way or another because of being in a different area. Because there's a lot of times on the pay at the pumps, they have now key loggers on those, hackers do. And again, update, update, update. <coughs> the Mac updates, Windows updates, I know they take forever and they're so annoying when you just want to shut down your computer and they won't let you because it tells you not to, but they're still very important. Back up everything, back it up often. I was the first, uh, I had my first mistake with this um, where I had all my music and all my photos just on my laptop many years ago. Um, I went to work, my fiance went to work, and our house got broken into and my laptop got stolen. Luckily, I had given my mother my old laptop because I just bought one like about three weeks previous. And she had all my pictures on that, my old laptop as well, but I didn't keep all my music on there. And I had some very, very, very hard to find um, music on there. That was never really, there's still three or four songs I was never able to get back because of uh, the computer gets stolen. Now, I have an external hard drive that's got everything. I've got Carbonite that has everything. And I have a big Casa account that has everything. Plus I keep stuff on um, iCloud and I push up to um, um, a uh, account uh, Evernote account to where I never will have that to happen again. Excuse me, can you explain the first two? Um, Bitcasa is a um, online file storage. Uh, Carbonite is actually a backup tool where it will run at night and back up your whole machine. Should that be I'm sorry? Should that be C A R B O N? C A R. Oh, yep. C A R B O N I T E. Sorry. I did not realize that was a misspell. <laughs> and in external hard drives, I actually keep two externals in my bag with different stuff on them. And now I just bought a terabyte one for $79 at Best Buy. And that little sucker is fast. And terabyte information is a lot to put on. And any questions? Oh, also, take it to the next page. My slides can be found at mlb.pw slash WCMIA16. Yes. Yes, sometimes when you go to update a plugin, it will break another plugin or just break the whole site. I've had this to happen a few times. Number one, 
run a backup before you update. Just because you could always roll back. Another nice little tool that WordPress makes is called WP Rollback, and it will roll back any plugin. To where I, I've actually used it a couple times this past week. I had issues with the site, um, and you can put it on, and it'll take it back um, to where you don't have to go to that website try to find the old to roll it back. Um, always test beforehand if you do have your site set up on a testing environment. Update it that way first just to make sure it doesn't break and then do your live site or then push it up to your live site. But if you do, if everything's just live, make a backup, keep the idea of the WP rollback plugin fresh in your head to where if you do need to go backwards you always can. And a lot of times if it breaks and if it's in like the first week, first couple days especially of an update, Send a message to the developer of the plugin saying, I have plugin X, I have your plugin. When I updated it, plugin Y went wonky. I'm not for sure if it's now plugin conflict. Do you know anything? Have you tested this way? Please, though, when you are writing to these plugin support people, don't be, your plugin broke my site. Nine times out of ten, it is something they're either not aware of or they are aware of and trying to make a fix for it. And you putting something up there will help, help them later. And I will be in the happiness bar for like the next hour or so if anyone has any more questions.